Hello again. I'm aware that I'm sometimes labelled as a white supremacist, which always makes me chuckle, although it shouldn't really. It's, I should treat it as a very serious um, allegation. The reason for this is that I have not the least doubt that some ethnic groups are the equal to, or, dare I say it, perhaps even superior in intellectual ability to Europeans. I have an idea this is not a view shared by all that many white supremacists. The fact that India, China, Japan and Israel are all sending up satellites to orbit the Earth and even putting men into orbit as well or landing spacecraft on the moon, sending missions to Mars and so on without any help from Europe or America is interesting and perhaps provides a clue about my thinking here. I want to compare today two space programs, one in India and the other in the African country of Zambia. It's often claimed by left-wing types that the dreadful conditions in most sub-Saharan African countries is a legacy of colonialism and imperialism and that were it not for European influence, Africa would today be flourishing. This is, by the way, the reason that Britain gives all that overseas aid, which I talked about this morning. They've been made to feel guilty about the British Empire and assuage that guilt by giving away £14,000 million a year to various corrupt dictatorships. It's seen as a form of reparation. This doesn't hold water, unfortunately, because, of course, India was a British colony for longer than any of those African countries, and colonialism doesn't seem to have done it any harm at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. In 1962, an organisation called the Indian National Committee for Space Research was established. This later became the Indian Space Research Organisation. In less than 20 years from when it was founded in 1962, India was launching its own rockets and satellites into orbit, which was, to say the very least of it, an astonishing achievement. Since then, they've gone from strength to strength, landing probes on the moon, sending rockets to orbit Mars. Next year, they hope to send men into space, and a mission to Venus has already been sketched in. The fact that India was colonised by Britain and only became independent after the end of the Second World War does not seem to have prevented India from developing space rockets and nuclear weapons. They are projected to become the world's third largest economy within a few years. Using imperialism as an excuse for failure has never been part of the Indian psyche although they will, of course, accept any money which the British wish to send them, and who can blame them? 18 months after the Indian space programme was set up, which led to such incredible results, Zambia in Africa, which was, of course, formerly Northern Rhodesia, decided that they too would start their own project to explore space. In the description to this video, I give links to a YouTube video about the Zambian space program and also an article about it. There's plenty more on the internet for those who would find it amusing to see about this uh, supposed space program. The aim was to send a 16-year-old girl to the moon uh, together with some cats to keep her company. The training for the astronauts, as the man in charge of the program called them, largely consisting in rolling them down hills in old oil drums. Unfortunately, halfway through the training, the teenage girl got pregnant and half the other would-be astronauts went on a drinking spree and were never seen again. Perhaps they were lucky because the rocket to the moon was to be projected from the Earth by a giant catapult. I'm not making any of this up, by the way. I urge viewers to look into this for themselves. Although this is all very amusing, there's actually a serious side to it. We are constantly urged to feel guilty for the legacy of colonialism and to blame our ancestors for all the ills which Africa and the Caribbean are suffering. 
This collective guilt is also imposed upon us regarding those of African origin living in Europe and North America. India was under the colonial yoke of Britain for far longer than any African nation, and yet, as soon as the British withdrew from their country, India went it alone with unrivalled success. Indians in Britain and the United States seem able to get by very easily without complaining constantly about racial prejudice or demanding an Indian History Month. Nor do they seem prone to rioting and looting every time an Indian is mistakenly killed by a police officer. Mind you, <laughs> that might also be because it is exceedingly rare for the average Indian to be found carrying a concealed firearm, stabbing the neighbours, dealing in drugs or pilfering from shops. Their dealings with the police do tend to be little less frequent than those of other groups, including, incidentally, the majority white population in England and America. I suspect that even the most diehard racist or white supremacist would agree with me about this. But just to check, let's carry out a little thought experiment. Imagine if you heard on the news tomorrow that North or South Korea had launched a satellite of their own. Would anybody be surprised? What about Taiwan or Singapore? Still not especially surprised? Iran? No, still plausible. Now instead, think how you would react if you heard that Jamaica or the Democratic Republic of the Congo had launched their own rocket carrying a satellite into orbit around the Earth. I think that most viewers would check to make sure that it wasn't April the 1st. Why should we feel this way? Is it some kind of implicit racism? Or is it an acceptance of reality? Why has history played out in this way, with Japanese satellites but none from Botswana? I'm curious to know what people think about this.